Well hi everyone, today I have a Sonos Play 1 that we're going to take a look at. Let's see if it works first of all. Floated in the summer sky. Yeah, of course it does. Okay, so this is the Sonos Play 1 um, and I bought this as faulty off of eBay but it actually was working. You can see there's a bit of damage here in this bottom corner. Uh, other than that, what do you get? Play, pause button, volume up and down and a single LED. Power lead on the bottom. An Ethernet jack on the back, which you don't need to use because it's Wi-Fi, obviously. And a mounting hole for for wall mounting. Well, let's get straight into it, and we'll start by pulling out this mains lead. It's a standard figure eight cable, and well, there's no visible means of entry into this yet. So I think we'll start by just removing this rubber footing, and see if there's any concealed screws under there. Yeah, that came off pretty easily and reveals four Torx head screws. You can see that damage a bit better here. There's a big crack in that bottom corner. Maybe it's been dropped at some point. Well, we'll start by removing... Actually, I'll put on my anti-static strap first. And we'll start by removing these four screws and see where we go from there. Someone's been in here before us because these screw heads are all pretty chewed up and the paint's been chipped off them. They look like T10 so I'll give that a try. Okay maybe not T10, I'll try a T9. Yeah, that seems to fit better. Let's take all four of them out and we'll see if we can prise off this bottom plate then. It does want to come off but it's tightly fitted. Let's see if we can persuade it off. Uh, there we go. Nothing else connected to this, just a basic plastic plate. A couple of part numbers printed on it for a black and a white version. And now uh, this metal screen wants to come off but it's just been held on by this little earthing tag here so we'll take that out as well okay this metal screen i think should just slip right off now it certainly does it's a nice piece of engineering it's obviously been seam welded along here but there's no visible means of join on the outside. A nice wee bit of engineering. Maybe a bit over engineered if you ask me. And what else do we have? We have the main base driver and the tweeter. Um, a number of screws holding the whole thing together. Nothing visible on either side. And we've already seen the back and the bottom. Um, okay, let's dig into this a bit further. I think some of these screws are going to have to come out. But these ones here are a bit chewed up, so maybe these four around the top, I think, probably hold the top plate on, and these ones hold the back on. Let's see if we can get the top off first then. Try that T9 again. It's kind of maybe. It's just a tight fit. It's kind of working, but I don't think this is the right size. Let's just keep these screws safe before they all roll off the desk. Okay, let's see if we can find the right size for these. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Try a T7. Oh, now that's much better. <laughs> Should have done that in the first place. Okay, let's get these four screws off. And the top cover does want to come off a bit. A little bit of gentle persuasion I think is required here just to prise it up. This thing is quite tightly put together. Uh, all the joins and seams seem to be taped. Um, or filled with, with some kind of rubbery felt type material. Probably just to avoid any base coming out. 
and there's a little ribbon cable that connects to the top buttons. It's held in with an FPC clamp, so we'll just clip that off. There we go. Not much to see here, just the PCB for the, the buttons and the one LED. And uh, nothing else, no Wi-Fi antennas or anything on the top of this, so they must be somewhere else. And there's the little ribbon cable, it runs inside. So I think this back plate is the next suspect to come off. And we'll see what that reveals for us. Yeah, these are T9 again, so we'll take these out. One. This should come off. Some definitely been in here before us because this tape along the joint has all been cut open. Let's just see if this will prise off gently. I don't want to go in too far in case there's cables or circuit boards and components and things here, so I'm just trying very gently from the edge. It does want to come up. some pretty beefy looking capacitors and things, but something's still holding it. Okay, there's um, a cable connector at this corner, and another one at this corner. Let's see, uh, we can unclip them and free this off a bit. Still another couple of cables there. I think those are the Wi-Fi antenna cables here. So I think we just released there the mains connection and the speaker connections and we're left with these Wi-Fi antenna connections but they've been held on with a, a hot melt glue. Let's see what we can do to remove that. Sometimes this hot melt glue just comes off in one piece with just a little bit of gentle persuasion. So give that a try. this. So we've got um, the connections that we pulled off. That one is the mains, that's mains voltage in. That one just goes directly to the loudspeaker and the tweeter, the base driver and the tweeter with no filtering or active components there at all. And the only other thing in here is a couple of cables that run up to each corner. I they must be the Wi-Fi antenna. There are no gaps at all in this, no base tubes or anything at all, and everything is covered in this felt-like material, obviously to reduce vibration. These are the Wi-Fi antenna. Yeah, they run up to these top corners, one at each side. Just there. Which corresponds to these two plates here. So they must be plastic plates. They just have small patch antennas on the back of them, I would guess. Leave that for now and take a look at the main gubbins. Okay, so this is where the mains comes in. Then there's some fairly standard looking switch mode power supply stuff going on here. So it's not a linear supply, it's definitely a switch mode supply. Some mains filtering and a 2 amp fuse. This storage capacitor. A transformer. Flyback transformer. Um, output capacitors. This whole area here is switch mode power supply. And down here there's a standard PCI Express Wi-Fi module. I don't think that's doing any of the processing. I think that's purely a Wi-Fi module that you might find, say, in, in a laptop. Part number WMC ND07.
these are those small T7 screws again so we'll pop this out see if there's anything under here so that comes out pretty easily and there's not much to say about this I think it's just a fairly standard off the shelf PCI Express Wi-Fi module there you go you can have a look at that And then let's take a look at the rest of this board. So up here is where the speaker's connected. So this kind of corner must be the audio output amplifier. And judging by these components and the inductors, it's probably a class D amplifier. We'll take a look at these chip part numbers later and figure out what's going on here. So there's obviously this big metal can as well under which will be the main processor and, and uh, all the smart circuitry. But we'll get the microscope out and we'll take a look at some of these part numbers. PCM5101A which is a stereo audio DAC so it's not the amplifier but that's the digital to analog part of the audio. Then over here is an RT8299 um, uh, that's uh, part of the low voltage power supply so that will be doing the the main processor and audio amp voltages what else can we see on here well, down here it says model amoeba Sonos part number amoeba, that's interesting I wonder if that was an internal working name or a, an early product name for it and manufacturing date of 14th of June 2013 and there's the Sonos brand which obviously reads the same forwards and backwards and upside down I think the next thing to do is maybe pop this metal can off and see what's under here So it's not soldered on and it just clipped off quite easily. And there's a huge processor under here. Take a look at that in a minute. And some memory chips. A few other devices. Let's have a look at them. So first they're up here. This Teradyn 78Q. That is the Ethernet transceiver. So that's for the physical Ethernet connection. Uh, down here, IDT 5V41129 is the clock generator um, for the audio. Uh, no, sorry, not for the audio. That's the clock generator for the PCI Express. So that's uh, where the Wi-Fi board is connected in. And here's the main processor. It's uh, oh, PowerQuick 2 MPC8314 running at 266 megahertz. So what we've got on top here are some flash memory, uh, Ethernet, physical interface, clock generator for the PCI Express and the main processor. A bunch of support circuitry, crystals and so on. Some power supply circuitry in the top right hand side of that can as well. So I think uh, we need to have a look on the other side of the board and it's held in by a number of torque screws again. Let's just pop them out and we'll see if we can get the board off. Okay, this is the last one to come out. A bit like that's all that's holding that board in. Uh, hopefully it hasn't been glued down. It certainly isn't just going to fall straight out. I think a little bit of gentle persuasion at the edges and just see what's going to happen here. I 
does want to come. I don't think there's much holding this in. Yeah, here it comes. Actually, the only thing holding that down was a couple of um, heat transfer strips. Okay, so some more componentry on the back. A big physical Ethernet connector, which is also acoustically sealed against the case with some more of that foam. Another big can on the back. Some support circuitry. Uh, power supply circuitry across the top for the SMPS part of the main supply. Um, this is the remainder of the audio circuitry. And that chip there, it seems to be the audio amp and it's a Class D audio amp TPA3116. Now it's billed as a 50 watt amp but I don't think it is. I think that's under some specific conditions is probably running about 15 or 20 watts in this instance. Let's pop this can off and take a look. What have we got under here? So that looks like a flash memory chip. Possibly a SD RAM chip. And a whole bunch of decoupling capacitors and passives and nothing much else apart from a big bit of foam which sits behind this memory chip. I think that's just there to, to help um, with the rigidity of the whole thing. Well, there we have it really. We've identified all the major components, the audio amplifier, the processor. We've discovered that they use an off-the-shelf PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter. There's also the physical Ethernet on the back if you want to connect it to a wired Ethernet. And have a look, here are all the parts that make up a Sonos Play 1 from the top. The main body with the, the two drivers, the main board, aluminium backplate, some screws and connectors, and the uh, steel grid that runs around it. Now, according to Sonos, this a lot of R and D was put into that steel grid, right down to the the whole size. And that steel grid goes right encapsulates the whole thing including round the Wi-Fi antennas so they must have been carefully calculated to make sure there's not too much attenuation on there. So I think we'll just put the whole thing back together again and make sure we haven't broken it. quite tricky to get these antenna cables back on. The, there's not a lot of play in these. Not a lot of extra length to mess with. Presumably they didn't want anything rattling about inside that could cause vibrations or interfere with the sound in any way. seems to be going back together really well and uh, not a single screw left over either. It's always a bonus. I'll just nip these up. I won't tighten this one too tight because that's where the broken plastic is. Put the rubber foot back on and we're just about done. So if you want uh, more details in any on any of those part numbers that were on those chips in there, just rewind the video and pause it at the parts where the um, part numbers were on the screen. If you like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave your comments, um, both positive and negative. I read them all and they're all interesting to me. So let's just check and see if this works. So I've put the power back in, it's booting up fire up Sonos app. You 
seems to have found it. Let's just pick some music at random. To play. One, two, three, four, come on. Don't want to get caught by YouTube's um, audio matching algorithms here. So there we go, that seems to work fine. That's a thumbs up. Don't forget to click subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified when I post more videos. Thanks for watching.